Good morning. Welcome back. This is Adam Rosen, and you're listening to the Total Need Tips and Pearls podcast. Uh, so if you haven't um, uh, seen it already, uh, just to let you uh, know and be aware that I wrote a book. Um, it's out and now and available. Um, and I wrote this specifically for patients. It's called The Knee Book, A Guide to the Aging Knee. But um, I really do think it's a great uh, book and reference for young doctors and, and definitely even recommending it to any non-orthopedic clinician that you run into, whether or not they be a physician or a nurse practitioner, a PA, because it goes through the algorithm of how we take care of patients from the most basic conservative care measures all the way up through surgery. But for you specifically, it offers tons and tons of analogies, which will help you in the clinic setting when it comes time to uh, talk to patients and explain things to them. But, um, just for reference, and um, I'm going to actually have another talk uh, or another uh, episode coming up where we're going to talk about clinic and talk about, you know, specifically why it's important that you get time in clinic during training. But in today's um, episode, I want to talk to you about leg length discrepancy. And I've never actually seen it on paper. Um, so, you know, I, I don't have a reference for it, but I think you've probably heard the same thing too. Most common reason for uh, lawsuits, malpractice lawsuits after total hip replacement surgery is leg length discrepancy. So it is something that patients are aware of. Um, and this comes into the office setting in many, many venues, which is why I want to talk to you about it. It's not just a hip replacement thing. So patients will be sent to you with a complaint of leg length discrepancy, or somebody will send a patient to therapy and the therapist you know, notes and measures that they have a leg length discrepancy. So then they get referred to orthopedics for leg length discrepancy. You know, and there's studies that show that... Um, a number of patients, normal patients without symptoms, have leg length discrepancy. Now, in my world specifically, you know, we're talking about knee replacement, hip replacement. Patients, because they're aware of the hip issue, will always ask, you know, if they're having a knee replacement, well, what about leg length? I heard you can have a leg length discrepancy. And, and that is true. So um, it can happen in knees and hips, but it can happen for multiple other reasons. The most important thing that I can let you know and share with you, though, is never tell a patient that they're wrong. Um, when they tell you that they feel that their leg lengths are unequal or different. And and I, I stress that because, you know, again, I see a lot of second, third opinions, and patients really get upset and angry when they tell a surgeon, you know, my, my leg lengths are off. And sometimes it can be accusatory. You, you made my leg longer, you made my leg short. Um, and I think doctors can take offense to that. And they may come back and go, now here's your x-ray. See, it measures equal. And yes, both parties are correct. You know, you can measure equal, but you can still feel long. And this is where I explain to patients, even before surgery, if they're seeing me for other things, you know, let patients know that there are multiple factors why they may feel or may have a true measured leg length discrepancy. They may be born like that. You know, and letting patients know that some people are born with one leg longer or shorter than the other. Um, they may have had some illness or injury. So maybe they have polio and one leg is underdeveloped and shorter. Maybe they had a fracture and that led to that leg either being long or short. When you come down to foot and ankle issues, you know, if someone has a bad is issue on one foot or ankle, that could have led to shortening of that leg. If they have a varus or valgus deformity of the knee, that can lead to this perceived leg length inequality because straight as the crow flies, you know, if the knee is severely valgus, that pelvis is going to dip and they're going to feel shorter on that side. So that's the person that if you straighten their leg out, you know, they'll ask, well, is it going to make my leg longer? Well, measurably, no, um, but it may feel long for a while because if they've been walking with this valgus deformity for many years and you straighten them out, it's going to kick their hip up. It's going to kick their, kick their pelvis up. It's going to change their pelvic obliquity, which is now normal for them, and they may feel long for a while. Now, what about the knee that's got a flexion contracture? So the patient that has a severe flexion contracture and has learned to walk in that direction, and you remove all these osteophytes and straighten out their leg, now they have full extension. They're going to feel long. And letting these patients know that before surgery is extremely important. So they have the right expectation after surgery. So when they feel long, they realize that this was a known thing because of their deformity, which you now corrected. And although they feel long, it is actually an equal length or a normal length for them. Now there are the rare knees where they are super, super lax. 
Um, and to get stability, especially if they have issues with hyperextension, you know, those are the people you might tell, hey, you might be a couple millimeters long. But I let these patients know that, you know, in the hip, you know, a lot of the tissue around the hip is more stretchy, like rubber bands. So there is the potential um, or a greater potential to make a leg longer on the hip replacement side. But the ligands being more fixed ropes, unless they're deformed and stretched out, um, it's hard to make the leg long at the knee. Now, when when might that happen? Well, half is loose and half is not, right? So that like a bad deformity where one side is lax, more commonly we see this on the valgus knee. So if they have an attenuated medial side, that's a knee that you may have to release the lateral structures and on purpose make that leg a little bit longer. So, you know, again, each patient is individual, but patients will have a big concern about this. So you have to look at each patient individually. Do you have a flexion contracture in your knee? Do you have a severe valgus or varus deformity? If you have a deformity, is the you know one side lax, meaning that I may have to lengthen the other side, um, all of those things may make that leg feel longer, even if it is measurably equal. Now, on the hip, it's even a bigger deal, right? Because you have a lot of issues. And this is where I have this long discussion with patients before surgery that when we talk about all the risks, and there's a lot of risks that we go through, but specifically, I always pair leg length and stability together. And again, letting them know that we want to make your hip stable so it does not dislocate. And to prevent that, if needed, we may make we may need to make your leg a little bit longer on purpose um, to make your hip stable. So stability is goal number one, and a very close goal number two is leg length equality. But again, it comes down to this perceived change where I always tell people, you know, for example, if your cartilage is three millimeters thick on the ball and your th- cartilage is three millimeters thick on, thick on the cup, and you've lost that, and I fix that by putting the ball back in the center, essentially makes your leg six millimeters longer. Um, now, I also add in, if your hip hasn't straightened, again, if you've had this flexion contracture, it's going to feel even longer. So a lot of people will feel long for six or eight weeks. And again, letting patients know that. So when they take that first step, they're not overwhelmed by this feeling of, this feels weird, this feels off, this feels long. They know that they were going to probably feel long for about six or eight weeks, and they will accommodate to it. Um, Now, who may be equal um, but feel long? And this is the patient where, again, you have to tread very lightly. Don't tell the patient they're wrong. If they feel long, um, you want to look and see, did you have to add a lot of offset? Maybe the leg lengths are the same. I find that if patients have a lot of offset, it tightens up those structures. It may tilt the pelvis. They may feel long. If someone has a severe deformity, and again, they've been walking with a very, very shortened leg. They're going to feel longer. And what is extremely important, especially I think for a lot of people, but definitely in the beginning of your practice is block all your patients. So in the office, when you see them before surgery, if you see these patients with these bad deformities in the hip area, is pull out your blocks, have them stand on blocks. What blocks makes you feel equal? What is the length? And then looking at that with relation to the measured x-rays and templating. So this way you might be able to say, you know, you're probably going to feel this much longer and slide that smallest block underneath. And then, oh yeah, okay. Eh, It feels a little off, but okay. Yeah. I assume I'll get used to it. Um, Whereas if someone especially feels long and they measure short, you have to have a very long discussion with them that they're probably going to feel longer. When is this going to happen? So again, one of the other most common reasons for leg length discrepancy is pelvic tilt, pelvic obliquity, specifically with regards to the back and a scoliosis. So when you have the patient that's got a severe degenerative scoliosis and that arthritic hip measurably is short because they've lost cartilage, but because of the pelvic tilt or obliquity, that leg to them feels long, you really, really need to counsel them ahead of time that after this surgery you know, they're going to feel longer. Now, they may or may not need a lift. I um, mean, I always tell, tell all my patients, like, really try to go without a lift for six or eight weeks um, if they feel a little off because they'll they'll not give that pelvis time to accommodate. Um, the other important patient to talk to is, let's say they have arthritis on both hips or both knees, and you're doing this in a staged fashion. So if you have someone that has two bad hips and you fix one, they're going to say you made the hip long. And we would look at that as, no, your other hip is still short. So having that discussion ahead of time is going to help you educate your patient that, yes, I'm going to fix one hip. When we fix this hip, it's going to feel 
long to you, which is going to be the new normal. We put your hip back in the center. Your other hip's still going to feel short. If it's a small change and it doesn't bother you, doesn't affect your rehab, your ambulation, you don't need to do anything. But if so, you might want to put a shoe lift under that contralateral leg until we do the other hip, say, in three months, and then you're going to feel equal. Now, the same sort of thing happens with the knee, but I get a little bit more concerned about the knee because, say, someone has two bad flexion contractures or two bad deformities. If you fix one and make that leg the normal, and you can get that knee into full extension, but the other leg is shortened from the belt line to the floor because of the deformity or the flexion contracture. There is the potential that the new knee that you fixed will develop a flexion contracture because as they ambulate, they're not going to lock that leg into extension. They're going to constantly stand and walk with that knee slightly bent to try to balance themselves to the other, other leg. So those are the patients that I may say, if we fixed your right knee, you know, you still have this bad wicked flexion contracture deformity on the left. Let's put a shoe lift in that left leg while you rehab the right to help your ambulation get full extension while you're ambulating. Um, But all of these are things, again, you have to look at each patient individually. Do they have a foot deformity? Do they have a knee deformity? Do they have a hip deformity? Do they have a femur or tibia um, deformity from prior injury? And what is their measured leg length? What is their perceived leg length? You do that by using blocks. And then you have an expectation of what will change at the time of surgery. So you can educate them prior to surgery about what they're going to feel after. Now, intraoperatively, for your peace of mind and for documentation's sake, um, more so, again, on the hip side, because the knee, you're going to have a poly thickness that's going to be balanced. Um, But on the hip side, because we have a little bit more wiggle room, let's just say for simplicity's sake that the hip implant that you're using, you have a zero ball and you have a plus two and a half or three ball or a minus two and a half or three ball. If you knew for sure that the hip was going to be the zero ball, What I recommend to especially young surgeons is that even if you believe that's the case and you've kind of trialed that, still make sure that you trial the minus and trial the plus because it will, one, teach you the difference of the feel of what is minus two and a half or three millimeters compared to what I perceive as stable. Is it still stable or is it loose? And then put the plus two and a half or plus three in and feel what it feels like. Feel the tension of the capsule. You know, feel the tension of the soft tissues. Put the hip through range of motion. You know, feel is my range of motion restricted um, because you can, one, then learn from that feel, the difference of a plus and a minus, um, but you can also document in your operative note. You know, we tried the zero leg length offset and stability was all conferred. I did trial the minus and it was unstable. There was trochan impingement or you know, that there was some issue that led to this instability or the leg felt short, tissues felt lax. And I tried the plus and the plus was difficult to reduce. They had restricted range of motion. The IT band was tight. You've kind of documented those things. And again, I promise you that you'll probably sleep better. Um, I know I did in the beginning of my career that I left that operating room and I knew that that was the best ball size for that patient because I tried the minus and the minus was unstable and I tried the plus and the plus was long. But also by documenting, if there's ever some question down the road and someone questions, oh, you made them long and you've documented, I did try the minus. And even if the leg lengths felt more equivalent, the hip was unstable. You had a clear reason for why you did what you did. Um, And again, it's much easier to have all of these discussions with patients beforehand as opposed to, we're going to do a hip or knee replacement, you'll feel great, and then afterwards they're unhappy because they have this leg length discrepancy. Um, And then you're trying to backpedal as to all the reasons technically why, and you're trying to go back and show them all these things. So again, the education, the pre-op education is extremely important, but again, leg length discrepancy and a very important thing, and again, I stress, which I stressed in the beginning, is never tell the patient they're wrong. You know, never be one of those doctors that when the patient complains that they feel long, that you throw an x-ray up and draw a line and say, nope, see, I made you equal. Um, Because you may have made them equal and they may still feel long. Um, So having this discussion is going to really, really help your rapport um, with your patients and make sure that you have happier patients at the end of the day. So I hope this helps. Um, Use this with all of your discussions, both with um, all of your patients in the hip and knee arena. And until next time, I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks for listening to the Total Knee Tips and Pearls podcast. Stay safe. You've been listening to the Total Knee Tips and Pearls podcast. Make sure that you're subscribed so you'll be notified of future episodes. And please take the time to leave a review. 
It helps other people like you find the show. Until next time, stay safe.